Okay guys, this is segment two of our unit eight videos and today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how do we take this idea of molar mass, which we did uh, the other day in terms of calculating molar mass and using Avogadro's number and then solving for comparisons or basically doing a little dimensional analysis with that. So to do that, we want to talk about three different scenarios. Scenario number one, how do moles relate to particles? Remember our particle types again are atoms, ions, formula units or FUs. Feel free to giggle. It does say FU on the screen, on the, on the board. And molecules. Now if you want to abbreviate molecules, it's, a, it's not a great one, but you actually can go all the way out to MOC and stop there. Because MOLE -E is mole. MOL is actually the abbreviation, yeah. Yeah, that's the abbreviation for a mole. That's the full word. I don't get it, but that's the way it works. So, so to abbreviate molecule, we go MOLE, C for molecules. Our different types of particles. So we have this relationship between these two. And we know that for every one mole, we always get 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of something. Okay, so what we want to do is set up some simple dimensional analysis to solve for these. So we're going to do some practice on the board uh, for each one of those, and then we'll do this, the ones on your screen, um, we can do those in class also. Okay, so let's talk about an example. If I take, oh, let's say I have 5.5 .5 moles of, let's say water. So I have 5.5 .5 moles of water. And I want to know how many molecules, because it's a covalent compound, how many molecules of water do I have? Okay. So I'm going to set up a pretty simple dimensional analysis. And what I want to do is convert moles of water into molecules of water. Okay. Well, here's our relationship for every type of particle. So if moles is here, moles goes down. One mole of water is always going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. Okay? So we need to take 5.5 .5 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So 5.5 .5 times... 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and I get 3.3121 times 10 to the 24th, okay? Now remember, we need to remember significant figures here. So this number, we're going to say is an exact number because this number is like pi where it goes on forever, and we're, pur we're purposely rounding it off at the 2. But over here, moles is measured. That is a measured value. So since I have 5.5, .5, I have two sig figs. I'm multiplying. i got to round my answer to two significant figures. And we will round this off at 3.3 times 10 to 24th molecules of water. Okay? There are two more on the screen. Uh, but we're going to move on, and we'll do those as practice, actually, in class. Now, the second possibility is converting moles to mass. So, if we're working with moles and mass, we learned in the previous videos that one mole is always equal to the molar mass of a substance in grams. Okay? So if I want to know, let's say, <clears throat> um, let's say I have 45.0 grams of water. And I want to know how many moles of water do I have. We have our equality, put into a simple dimensional analysis. Again, I have grams, and the question is how many moles do I have. So my answer will be in moles of water. Okay. To do this, 
I need to know this relationship. I need to know what number is in here. So it's going to take a second little calculation. So I want to say for every, for water, I have two hydrogens. I have one oxygen. Hydrogen's molar mass, if we look it up, is 1.01 grams per mole. Oxygen's molar mass, 16.00 grams per mole. So 2 times 1.01 is 2.02 .02 grams per mole. Oxygen is still 16 grams per mole. And together we get 18.02 grams per mole. So that's the molar mass of water. So this number now we can use inside of here. So I have grams here, so grams has to go down. I'm solving for moles of water. And there's 18.02 grams of water for every one mole of water. So now I'm just taking my 45 divided by the 18.02. We do that. 45 divided by 18.02. Now I get 2.497225305. My dumb calculator has no idea where to round this. I need to decide. I have one, two, three significant figures. This number in it, again, we purposefully rounded at the hundreds place, so we will not factor it into our significant figures. Grams are measured, so I have three. I need to round this off at three. So 2.497, seven tells me to round up. And we get 2.50 moles of water for this one. All right, there's two more practice on the screen. We will hit those in class. Okay, we have one more uh, example that we need to work through, and then we'll practice this in class coming up. And that is what happens when we have to compare moles to volume. Now this one's a little bit different than the other two. We've already talked in class about molar mass and calculating that. We talked about Avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd for particles, but we really haven't talked about volume yet. Now one thing chemists can do is because gases act in a larger amount of space, uh, we've actually been able to figure out that any gas at the same temperature and pressure, no matter what type of gas it is, it can be oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, um, nitrogen gas, it doesn't matter what type of gas it is, they all will have the same number of moles per liter of those gas at the same temperature and pressure. So what scientists have done is they've set up a standardized temperature and pressure to base this off of. So as we see on the screen, the standard temperature and pressure, we're going to be able to relate that back to moles. So at STP, and STP stands for standard, T is for temperature, P is for pressure, at STP, one mole of any gas will equal 22.4 liters of that gas, okay? It's a nice little tool to have. Um, if we have to, we can always convert into standard temperature and standard pressure, and then we can use this value. Now, standard temperature is actually zero degrees Celsius, okay? So our standard temperature is basically our zero point or our freezing point for water. Our standard pressure is one atmospheric pressure or basically the standard pressure in our um, atmosphere on a given day. Now our atmospheric pressure does vary up and down depending on low pressure systems and high pressure systems but on average it equals out to be about one atmosphere's worth of pressure and that is our standard pressure. So working at standard temperature and standard pressure we can say that there's always one mole's worth of gas in 22.4 liters of gas. Okay so 22.4 liters, okay, this is not milliliters, so that's a pretty big volume there for one mole's worth of our gas. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through a practice problem, and then in class, we will work out this bottom one right here. So let's go to the board. Let's say I have uh, three moles of carbon dioxide. Three moles of carbon dioxide, and I want to know how much volume will this gas take up if I have three moles of carbon dioxide at STP, or at standard temperature and pressure. Okay, so again, we set up a simple dimensional analysis, and we just put in our conversion factor. 
we know that there, for every one mole of any gas at STP, we get 22.4 liters of that gas. Now, let's say I wanted this in milliliters, or I want to solve for how many milliliters of the gas I'd have. I could always add in another conversion factor and say for every one liter, I get 1,000 milliliters of my gas also. And we could do it that way. So if I had three moles of carbon dioxide gas, how many milliliters of the gas am I going to make? So we have milliliters of CO2 is what we're producing. And now I just do my math. Where we take the 3 times the 22.4, these are both 2s, times the 1,000. So 3 times 22.4, 1,000. And I get 6,000, 67,200 milliliters. Come back over here, I have one, two significant figures. This is a standard value, so that won't factor into our significant figures. Moles measured to two, so I'm going to round this number down to two sig figs. So I have 67,000 milliliters of carbon dioxide, okay? Or 67,000 milliliters of carbon dioxide in our problem. Okay, guys, one last slide I want to show you is this one here in your notes. I like this slide because what it does is it gives you all the pathways and conversions that you're going to need in our initial practice. So if you take a look, you notice how if you have moles, you can go up to your volume of gas by doing this conversion. You can go down into moles from here. Um, and then what it also allows us to do is if you have mass, you actually can start combining these problems together. So if you know mass, you can do this step to get to moles and then this step to get to particles. So you can, these problems can become two or three step process. If you have your moles, you can go from here to here, back over here. So it's a great little chart to show you the pathways that's possible and the equations or the conversions that you're going to use to do that. So when you're practicing, um, feel free to pull this up and look at that as a help for, for you guys to do that. Now. If you take a look, these practice problems on the screen are a little different. How many molecules are in 37.5 grams? Okay, so we now have molecules to grams. So if we back up, molecule is a type of particle, and it wants grams. So you're going to have to do two steps to get to that process. Okay, so these three additional practice that you'll be doing in class next day or so, um, take the same idea, but now you work it through two-step or three-step process in, in there. Okay, that is it for this video today, guys. Um, this takes us through our different types of practice. In class tomorrow, we will go through all the different practice that are on these slides and work through all of them. If you get those done, then we can move on to actually looking at some of the practice on the worksheets also. So make sure you bring the worksheets to class and be ready to practice these that are in our uh, notes tomorrow. Thank you.